Today I'm going to share something with you about our beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and our relationship with him but when I start discussing this with you it will feel like that is not my topic at all by the end I hope to see that it is in fact what I want to share with you for myself personally this is one of the most powerful lessons I ever studied in the Quran and I'm very moved by this lesson I pray that I'm able to communicate some of the beauty and the power of what I was honored to study and to learn from this surah this lesson belongs to surah yasin the 36th surah of the quran allah azza wa describes in this surah a unique story of prophets typically you find that allah azza wa sends one rasul to one town but in this case allah azza wa says it's id arsalna ilayhi muthnain allah sent two messengers to them and the nation rejected both of those messengers fa azzazna bi thalith then Allah reinforced, Allah says, we reinforce them with a third one. So now this nation is unique to any other nation because three messengers are giving them the message at the same time. And then their response to all three of those messengers is, and, and by the way, before I go on, you have to appreciate, Harun, Musa alayhi salam had to challenge one of the greatest villains mentioned in the Quran, Fir'aun. And he asked for the help of who? Harun. So that's two of them. That's two of them. And when you study the Qur'an, you find even when there were two of them, Musa alayhi salam did all of the talking. Harun alayhi salam was silent actually. It was all of the job was being done still by Musa alayhi salam. Harun alayhi salam was support. He was there, Ushdud bihi azri wa ashriku fi amri. Reinforce my back with him, make him a partner in my mission. But his, his job became more support than anything else. In the case of these messengers, all three of them were giving da'wah. All of them are delivering the message. And all of them are give, given the same rejection. Inna tatayyarna bikum. La illam tantahu la narjumannakum. If we, we think all of you are cursed. The people said, all of you are a curse on our nation. And if you don't stop this preaching of yours, we are going to stone you to death. La narjumannakum. Aw la yamassannakum minna adhabun alim. Or we'll find some other painful way of torturing you. You better stop. And so these mess three of them were rejected. And as that's happening, Allah Azza wa Jal adds a fourth person in this story. Three wasn't enough, now a fourth person. But this fourth person is not a messenger. It's not a messenger. From the other end of the city. Meaning they're in this town, in a neighboring city, somebody heard, a believer heard that there are three messengers here delivering a message and nobody's listening to them. I should go help them. So as a believer, he comes from the other city and he comes and he starts talking to the people. What's incredible about Surat Yasin in this story is that you have three messengers and combined they say one or two things in the Quran. But when this person comes from the other town, basically the rest of the conversation is his speech. His speech is longer, two, three times longer than the speech of all of the messengers combined in the Quran. It's incredible. In, in our capacity, it would be like, you know, you say when somebody more knowledgeable is available, you should be quiet, right? The, the Arab, old Arabic saying is, Agna sabahu anil misbah. When the morning is there, the lamp is unnecessary. Right, so the point they're trying to make is, if somebody more knowledgeable is there, you should be quiet. Three messengers are there. Three of them are there. And he feels the need to speak. We would think, oh, three of them are there, I should just listen to them, not talk. in their presence, why should I talk? Allah taught us something. Messengers have their own responsibility. The ummah who believes in them have their own responsibility. The messengers will do their job, the believer will do his job or her job. And they cannot replace each other's job. They cannot say, well, the messenger is already there, so I don't have to do it. No, you still have to do it. And he speaks, and he speaks in the Qur'an, his speech is recorded longer than all of those messengers. Now, the lesson being taught here, now we come to our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the lesson being taught here is that the believer cannot say, well the messenger came, he already did what had to be done, my responsibility is over. You see? What does Allah do in Surah Yaseen after that? Right after this story, Allah describes something, and this is where I need your attention, Allah describes something that seems like it's not related at all. He says, about the, He starts talking about the sun and the moon. He starts talking about the sun and the moon. And He says about the moon, وَالْقَمَرْ قَدَّرْنَاهُ مَنَازِلْ حَتَّى عَادَكَ الْعُرْجُونِ الْقَدِيمِ 
we make the moon go through different phases. We especially pay attention to the phases of the moon in the month of Ramadan. So he says the moon goes through phases. And he, he talks about the sun. And then he adds one statement. He says, لَالشَّمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَن تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرِ وَلَا اللَّيْلُ سَابِقُ النَّهَارِ The sun, it's not, it's not appropriate for the sun to get ahead of the moon. And the night cannot come before the day. وَكُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَصْبَحُونَ Every one of them has their place. They are moving in their own place. Everything has its own job. The story right before was, messengers have their own job, and followers have their own job. And now Allah says, just like that, what has their own job? The sun has its own job, and the moon has its own job. So and now as we come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, why is this so powerful? Our messenger alayhi salatu wasalam in Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah azza wa was describing him. He was talking to him and telling him what role he has to play. Inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadhiran wa da'iyan ila Allahi bi idnihi wa sirajan munira. Allah says about the Messenger والسلام, that he plays multiple roles, but at the end of those roles, Allah describes our Messenger with a unique word. He calls him Sirajam Munira, a lamp, a lamp that gives light and illuminates other things. A lamp that shines light on other things and illuminates them. Now, here's the thing about that the word Siraj in the Quran is used for the sun. It's used for the sun. وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَهَاجًا our messenger والسلام, is being compared to what? The sun. Surah Yasin says the sun has its own job and the moon has its own job. Now, when our messenger is being compared to the sun, what does that mean? When the messenger came وسلم, and you were in his presence, there is no possibility that you will not be exposed to light. There is no possibility. There is no possibility that darkness will not go away because the sun has arrived. But Allah Azza wa Jal's decree is that the sun will not stay in the sky forever. The sun goes away. And when the sun goes away, whose turn is it? It's the moon's turn. Our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa is no longer with us. But who's still here? We're still here. And by the way, the sun, the sun is in the commanding position and the moon is a follower. Now we even know that scientifically. The moon is simply a follower. Pulled all of, all of these planets and their, their moons are forced into the gravitational field of the sun. And the only reason the moon has any light is because it reflects the light of the sun. So we are living in dark times. We are like the believers who are living in dark times. And we are being compared to the moon. And the only light we have the only light we have is the light shining on us through the darkness that actually originates from where? From the sun, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The iman of every believer, every believer is actually a reflection of the original teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like the sun shines on the moon. And now think about this, think about this. Allah azza wa jal gave us the sun and the sun does not go through phases. The sun is perfect every time. But the moon, sometimes it's a full moon and sometimes it's a very weak moon. Just like the believer, we don't stay the same. Allah Azza wa Jal described the heart of our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ fuadak, So we can make your heart firm and permanent Meaning the light of Iman, the light of the faith of Allah In the Messenger's heart Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is permanent It's like the sun constantly burning light When you see the sun it's still there When you don't see it it's still there It's still shining its light on the moon but the moon goes through phases like a believer goes through phases. And sometimes the believer's iman is so weak, you can barely find it in the sky. But even when your faith is so, so weak, know one thing, you are still representing the light of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the, that is the, when you look at the sky the next time, when you look at the sky, when you look at the moon, you're actually looking at yourself. You're looking at yourself, you're reminding yourself that Allah Azza wa Jal chose this ummah to be around in the darkest of times so they can reflect the light of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا what, what kind of responsibility does that put on you and me? You know what that does? It helps you understand what Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said. He said, 
famously he said, "Ana Rasulu Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam." I am the messenger of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he taught us something about being a member of this ummah. Every one of us, every one of us, is a representative of our messenger alaihi salatu wasallam. Every one of us. When we are obeying him and when we are disobeying him, when we are acting the way we should and when we are acting not the way we should, when we speak ill of others and when we speak kindly of others, when we control our eyes and when we don't control our eyes, that whether we like it or not, we are ref- we are supposed to be reflecting the light of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We 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 carry that responsibility, and sometimes we don't do such a good job. It's not like the full moon; sometimes it's very weak. But you know what? Just because it's weak, never does it mean it disappeared. Because the way Allah decreed the moon to be, when it's at its weakest, then it's time for it to what? Rise again. Rise again. Our messenger would say about the believer that their iman, iman will go sa'at and fasa'at. It will go up and down, time and time. You won't feel the same reverence and strength of faith all the time. But your connection to your messenger والسلام, will strengthen your faith over and over and over again. Ya Rab, that's our relationship with our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what he re- represents to us. You know, the last thing I share with you here is what it, why did Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, this, this wisdom, what else does it mean for you and me? It actually means that Allah Azza wa Jal chose us, chose us to act, carry on the mission of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah knew that when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is no longer in this world with us, the way he was with the Sahaba. When he's no longer there, it's going to be like the sun disappeared and night came. Like night came. And when night comes, there's hopelessness, there's darkness, there's fear, there's anxiety, there's ignorance. What do I mean by ignorance? At, in the daytime, you can find your way. In nighttime, you can get easily lost. In the daytime, the same street is safe. At nighttime, the same street is dangerous. In the daytime, there's life. At nighttime, there's death. There's stillness. Allah Azza wa Jal chose this ummah to be the only source of light in the darkness. When everybody else is surrounded by darkness, He chose us to be the moon. He chose us to, for, for, for people to find light and find some hope. And when they see us, they see some glimpse, some glimpse of Habibuna sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is what you and I are supposed to be. That is what Allah Azza wa Jal has given us. You know, inshallah, in the next time I speak about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we'll talk about one of the most powerful ayat of the Qur'an, where Allah Azza wa Jal himself sends salawat upon the messenger alayhi salatu wa salam. And it's actually related to this lesson. So we'll, we'll discuss that at another time. But for now, I want you to reflect and really do think that Allah, whatever signs Allah has given us, the sun, the moon, the wind, the trees, every one of those signs, behind them is a lesson. Behind them is a lesson. And so we never, the believer will never look at the sun the same way again. The believer will never look at the moon the same way again. Now you don't have to listen to a khutbah about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be reminded to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You just have to look out and the sun is coming up and you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The, next, the, 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 the sun is now a reminder of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the beauty of this Qur'an. It never, once you, once you embody its view, you can never escape reminder. You can never escape reminder. And we can never escape our connection to our beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah azza wa jal make us all those who carry the light of, of our messenger alayhi salatu wa sallam and actually reflect that light outward so others can find their way towards that sun. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikr.